Hello and welcome back to this video series in which I cover the basic steps needed to build a variety of simulations. I am focusing on the Corona Discharge example. In this video I will cover uh, running the simulation analyzers and visualizing the data. This is the last video in this series. So, we have gone through the process of setting up this simulation and we are now ready to run it. Um, the, so what you want to do is you want to click on the save, it, save and set up button up in the lower right hand corner. And this will uh, use a Python script to convert the .sdf file into um, what's called a .in file. Um, so once you see this .in file has been written, then you're ready to run. You'll also see in the upper right, simulation setup, simulation setup is ready. And on the lower left, completed, setup completed. Click run to continue. We're now ready to run. So if we click on the run option on the far left, we'll see that the time step um, in the simulation is pre-populated. I figured out what the minimum time step is for this simulation to produce accurate results. The way I did that is through two processes. One, I figured out what the collision frequency is, the, the uh, maximum collision frequency is for the collisional process we have included. Of course, that results in a, um, a um, minimum collision um, period or time. And we need to resolve this to get the collision modeling correct. So DT1 is just the collision period divided by 3. There's also another time constraint and that is that the fastest moving electron cannot uh, cannot cross more than one cell in a time step. In fact it should cross some fraction of a cell in a given time step. So the, the maximum drift speed is based on the potential difference and I figured out what that maximum drift speed is uh, here, VD1. I then uh, figured out what that maximum collision time is in this quantity called DT2. So it's the minimum cell size divided by the maximum drift speed. And finally, DT is the smaller of DT1 and DT2. I then went into basic settings and under time step, I right click I assigned a parameter and I assigned it DT right here. Okay, so that's how I figure out what the time step is in this simulation. I'm running it for 500 time steps and I'm saving every 25 um, time steps. I want to save the first time, the, um, the time step at time zero. I want to save, so I click that box and I want to run in parallel. And once I've done that, and I specify the number of cores here, then I click the Run option, or the, the Run button, and I go ahead and proceed with the simulation. Now actually, I don't want to run for 500 time steps in this video, and I want to show you what it looks like at the end, so I'm going to save, I'm going to run for one time step, and I'll save that data dump just to show you what uh, the, the uh, output will look like once the simulation is finished. Now once, once the simulation starts you'll see a variety of output. Um, and, the, and then we'll proceed to the first time step. Now we're using an iterative electrostatic field solve uh, and so when you when you use the electrostatic field solve, you'll see these iterations. This is uh, iterations on each time step to invert the Poisson matrix or the Laplacian. It does converge faster uh, by about time step 50 or 75 once the plasma has formed. Now once the simulation, that was time step zero, so now we're going to proceed to time step one.
Then again, we see these uh, same iterations or similar iterations as before. This will just repeat every time step. Now this is a fairly large 3D problem and so it'll run much faster on more cores and uh, you know for this type of problem you'll probably want between 20 and 30 cores. Once it's finished it'll say engine complete successfully. Uh, to, to see results click on the visualization icon uh, in the icon panel. Now I only ran it for one time step so we won't get very interesting data. So this is the simulation in which I ran it for 500 time steps and we'll I'm going to go ahead and click on the analyze tab first um, because what I want to do is I want to um, there's an important aspect to this simulation the nitrogen and secondary electrons do not form until probably about time step 50 or 100 so therefore I don't have data dumps for time step uh, 25 and 50 and but I want all the data to match up so um, I'm going to save sort of empty um, files so that if when I plot the secondaries and the nitrogen on top of each other I'm looking at the same time step so I put n2 plus here as my species I go to analyze um, sorry. I go to analyze and this will um, and, okay so I got an error here uh, but the reason is because I had the simulation name incorrect so I click analyze again um, and then that fills in uh, data set so that all the data will be plotted at the same time and then I need to do the same for secondary electrons now the list of analyzers is over here on the left and this is called create missing particle dumps um, which these are alphabetical order so here's create missing particle dumps we can also compute the number density um, so if we just look for compute particle number density uh, and then we put in the species name then that will compute the particle number density for nitrogen plus and then you know it works when it says analyzer completed successfully we could do the same for secondary electrons now I click on visualize and I already loaded the, some of the data but that was before I created these data sets these number density data sets so I'm gonna go ahead and reload the data to make sure I get the number densities also um, loaded into the visualization window So if we go, um, the default view when you first do this will be data overview. That'll be the only tab open. You can create other tabs by clicking up here on add it, uh, where it says add a data view, and then you can, for example, click on the field analyzer. Whoops, and I accidentally closed the data view. So if you do that, then you can just create a new one. So let's look at the geometries. Uh, we can make this bigger here and if we click on polysphere and polycylinder dielectric now we have both of the geometries that we've included uh, if we want that outer that's just the, dial the dielectric cylinder then we could do that and now you can see the whole thing so there's the inner one is my dielectric and the outer one is this is the conductor now let's go ahead and add some particles so um, we can add that initial electron which is right there and 
that's not really going to do much, but that does create the cascading effect. Uh, and then we could click on secondary electrons. And you see this time zero here, everything should be at the same time. Well, the, ge the geometries will always be at time zero, but any physics that you include, if it's fields and particles, then you want everything plotted at the same time, which is what this create missing particle dumps does for you. So, um, let's just see what happens. Let's uh, scroll through time. So the electron is being accelerated in that potential difference and now you're seeing this cascading effect of the secondary electrons that form. And if we want to look at the uh, nitrogen, then we can also uh, view that. All right, so there's our corona discharge occurring before our very eyes. Um, and if uh, and those um, population, those species will accumulate on the dielectric, which modify the electric field. We can plot the, di the electric field on top of that if we want. Um, so we go to scalar data. We expand the E and we see nothing because we are looking at the electric field on this surface. So to see it inside, cut through the geometry, we need to clip the plot. And now we're looking at the particles superimposed on the field um, in the background. And so you can see them both evolving um, at the same time. OK. All righty. So that is an overview of um, how to analyze the data in vSIM and how to load it. And this concludes our video series. Uh, this, was a, this is a five-part video series on how to set up a problem uh, in vSIM. So after finishing these five videos, you should have a good handle on how to set up your own problem. Thank you for watching.